Luisa Gavati, and uh, my wife and I own a uh, Crown S Ranch in Winthrop, Washington, and we raise uh, uh, beyond organic meat and vegetable products. And uh, we currently own uh, approximately 50 acres, and we lease another 130, or approximately somewhere in that range. Um, and um, yeah, we're trying to be uh, as uh, uh, with an emphasis on recycling of nutrients. And um, raising good, healthy products for uh, human consumption. I'm Jennifer Arvids, and I'm the co owner of Crown S Ranch. And I work on the, I do the marketing part of our farm, and also basically anything beyond as soon as the animal's processed. And so the coordination of the processing, I also help to allocate feed, and um, I help in transport as well at farmers market. When someone comes to visit our farm, usually the first thing they say is, this is exactly what they think all family farms are, or what they look like, because this is the image that most of the marketing projects, the small family farm on pasture, um, some sort of healthy animals. Are, our motto is better for the animal, better for the environment, better for you, and that, I really feel that each person or our society believes in those morals and, and those values and that's what's often marketed to the individual and when in reality it's not the case and our farm is actually pretty unique. Uh, you guys have had the benefit of an entirely different skill set uh, in engineering uh, to help supplement your income while you, while you uh, transition your farm to, to organic and sustainable. Do you think that the average farmer would be able to sort of transition uh, to this type of operation without some kind of supplemental income? Yeah, I, I, that's... They may have to take a loan to make Could farmers, could, could small farmers transition from their quote industrial model to uh, a, a more sustainable, and that doesn't have to be organic even necessarily, model. And the a answer for me is, y yeah, an added value model is what I'd call it. And yes, like I said, I, I was seeing, as I stated earlier, as I see a lot of farmers around here just barely scratching by. Most of them are cow-calf operators. And they do, they are scratching by, and you know, even if they could add 10% value by self-marketing or, or, or direct marketing, they could you know, it could change their whole life, you know, it's one more, it's another tire on the tractor. It's like the water's good. <laughs> oh, yeah. My name is Travis Meyer. I'm from Michigan and I got into organic farming, I suppose, because I really like being outside and working on a farm. That's how it started and uh, the organic aspect came with an interest in sustainability. Okay. What is sustainable farming? It's very hard. Sustainable farming is uh, very hard to define. Mm -hmm. uh, so sustainability alone is pretty hard to define, but um, a simple sort of catch-all, it would be like uh, farming practices that don't deplete the future generation's ability to farm. Knowing how to raise our own food and, and process it and cook it and preserve it in a sustainable fashion that, like I said, with our model, better for the animal, better for the environment, better for you, with that cycle, that, that really is the future of farming. And once we, as Crownus Ranch, have that loop completely closed, we feel that information can be used. Our, our farm is about 150 acres. Um, that size farm is really kind of the prototype in each community based on their adjacent population base will need so many of these small farms to feed themselves. My name is Russell Swift. I'm from Olympia, Washington. And um, what made you want to get into sustainable farming? Um, 
what made me want to get into sustainable farming is it kind of just feels like the only thing that's like real to me in life. Um, I didn't, I don't know, want to be behind a desk, uh, I don't know, or having any sort of job like that. So like uh, producing something with your own hands, being able to feed people and feed yourself uh, seemed like an attractive thing to me. You know, this overlapping farming that you've got here uh, with, with uh, you know, chickens, pigs, cattle, everything kind of intertwined, um, do you think that that could translate to a, a, a larger farm, more than 50 acres, what would consider be considered an industrial farm now? Do you think that you could do that on a large scale? Yes, definitely. See, I, as, I as a controls engineer and as a systems engineer, I, I you know, I have immediately my mind jumps like my chicken trains. You know, I visualize one of those at 60 feet wide, marching across a, 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 a you know, a 40 acre plot out there under a pivot, lay at a rate set to lay down, you could even do it just like you do the tractor, so the tra with GPS, so you'll change the rate of movement, and you know approximately what the chickens eat an hour, so you could exactly lay down just like you do with your tractor for each position. Even, even at the speed it goes, you could have a sensor that would sense the this test the soil as it went and uh, you know that that's on runtime is pretty it's pretty mediocre now in my understanding but you could even implement that so the answer is yes i i, I the sky's the limit it it's just a change of 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 approach the approach is has always been is basically we can better nature and my approach is always i can improve nature